Okay, so babies born via cesarean have a slight increased risk of difficulty with transitioning, which is like the process of going from inside to outside. Transitioning. <laughs> Why do I keep defining things that you already know what they have? Um, uh, like, you all know what transitioning means. So they will oftentimes have a bit more trouble with that. And uh, because of that, require a little bit more respiratory support. There's a lot of theories around why this happens, uh, and they do often have a higher chance of having things like transient tachypnea of the newborn. But I don't think that there's any association with long-term respiratory problems once you remove the confounders here. So you have to think about this kind of from an aspect of what causes people to have cesarean births, right? So you can't just look at all cesarean births and all vaginal births because there's reasons that people end up in one of those two groups. So in a cesarean birth, say, you know, you have a group of babies that's 24 to 30 weeks when they're born, they definitely will have higher rates of respiratory issues and both long-term and acutely when they're first born. But also they're more likely to be a cesarean birth because they're more likely to have, um, no, not be able to tolerate labor or to have an emergent problem that's causing the delivery to need to happen or have a malposition, meaning being transverse or something like that. So you can't just look at one-to-one. -one. You have to take out the confounding and then compare. And once you do that, long-term issues related to cesarean, as far as breathing issues, I don't think are there.